So we'll continue with our introduction to lists. So we have the a list of colors, and to find the length of the list, that is how many items are in the list, there's a function, len, len like length. Now this is the same function you use for strings to find out how long a string was. So this will tell us how long the list is. One, two, three, four, five, six, it should tell us six. Another thing to look at is, um, yeah, the length is six. Another thing to look at is how you can see if something is in the list. You did learn the index list method, which will search, but this is a, a quick way to just check if something's in there and it returns true or false. And we just use the word in. So let's define a variable red, and we're going to check to see if red is in the list. So is the favorite, i.e. red, in colors? And it will print true, because it is in the colors. But if I put another one in there, let's say um, black, and run it again, then black is not in colors, so it comes up false. So you can use that for if statements, like if the favorite color is in the list of colors, then print this. If not, print this. So in this case, it printed your favorite color black is not in the list. And just to refresh your memory that these things, well, actually, these things work the same way with the string. So we did talk about length being the length of the string, A, B, C, D, E, which is five. And you can do this for strings too. You can see, is the letter A in the string Python? And no, it's not, so it's false. Is the letter O in the string Python? Yes, it is, so it's true. Lists in Python are pretty easy to work with, and one reason it's easy to work with is there's a sort list method, which just sorts the colors in ascending alphabetic or numeric order, depending on what type of uh, items are you have. So in this case, this is out of order in terms of alphabetic. Uh, blue looks like it should be the first one. So this will sort the color list. Again, I did not um, set it equal to a new list because string meth I'm sorry, list methods sort in place. It means it actually changes the color list. So the color list will be sorted. So let's run this. And the original list started with red, that's this one, but the sorted list is in alphabetical. If you want to sort it in reverse order, you just inside the bracket, the bracket, the parentheses are empty in here, but if you want to sort it in reverse order, you just say reverse equals true, and it'll do it alphabetically backwards. And this would do the same thing numerically, either ascending or descending. So let's say you want to loop over a list and print, the, print all the list of items out. One way that you might think to do it is, let's just make a loop where i, an index number, goes from 0 up until the length of color. So it'll go from 0 to 6. Then, if you have the index, you can use that index to reference the color. So this is color dot zero, a color at zero index would be red. Then the next time around, i is now two, I'm sorry, one, so it goes blue, then it goes yellow, and so forth. This is how you do it if you programmed in Java or pretty much all other languages. And it takes each one and prints it out in order. Don't do it this way. Python has a much more elegant way of iterating over a list. So let's even get rid of that so you don't see that longer than you have to. Um, here's a more elegant way. You can just, instead of having range here, just put the list there. And it will, it will loop over the list. The first time around, the, the variable color will be assigned to red, second time around will be assigned to blue, and so forth. And this is much more elegant. You don't need to deal with I, which you never ended up using anyway. So this is, uh, this is the Pythonic way to 
go over a list. So this um, works even if you didn't make the list to start with and then use that variable here. You can just put the list right in there for ingredient in this list of ingredients. It'll print the ingredients out. Let's run that. So it prints, prints them out. And this, this did work for strings as well. For letter in debug, it goes through the, anything that's iterable will work this way. A string is iterable. It means it can go uh, one, one at a time and pull out part of the string. So showing you how to re reference the different items in a list using a for loop. But you can also use a for loop to build a list. And with the way we're going to do it is we're going to append items to a list. So just, just in general, to append an item to the end of a list, you use the append uh, method. And so the original uh, list is here. This will append the word indigo to the, the color indigo to the end of the list. And again, this uh, does it in place. So it will just, I don't, need to re, I don't need to reassign it to colors. Colors now has indigo at the end. So you can use this append method to build up a list. So let's say we want to have a list of perfect cubes. Uh, we can use i, in this case from, it goes from 0 to 3, and this will append i cubed to the end of the list. So this starts with a blank list. First time around, it takes 0 cubed, puts it in there, 0. Next time around, 1 cubed, 2 cubed, 3 cubed. So, so there you go. And so it did that. It built up a list that has these four elements in it. Now, here's a tricky thing. Lists don't just have to have text and numer numeric values. You can have a list of lists. Like coordinate pairs are a list. It's a, it's a list of two things, the x value, the y value, the x coordinate, y coordinate. So that is a coordinate pair, 2, 5, and you can put a dot there. So that's something you might want to have a list of. You might want to have a list of all the coordinates that make up a polygon. And so now, look at what coordinate 2 does. Coordinate 2 I'm sorry, coordinates, it's, it's, this is the zeroth element, this is the first element, this is the second element here. But when I print this, it actually pulls up a list. So here's a question for you. How do you think um, I could reference, let's say, just the y value of the coordinates at index 2? So this will get the x and y, this will get seven, this will get returned seven and four, but I only want the, let's say this is the zeroth element, this is only the, this is the first element, first item of the list at index two, so I can just put a one there. This pulls out the coordinate pair, which is a list of two items, and this tells me I want the item at index value one. So this right now will pull out just the four. And there it is. So this is, uh, in, in some lingo, is called a two-dimensional array because you could make a table and this would have two different columns in the table instead of just a, being a list. You can, these could be three values. It could be x, y, and z for a 3D object like a polyhedron. And then you just have more different indices tacked together. So let's practice looping through this again for coordinate and coordinates. That will, that will loop through the coordinates and each time it prints a coordinate. Okay, so this will print the coordinate pair. Maybe I should call it coordinate pair just to make it easier to see what it is, because it'll pull out the list of a 2, 2, or I'm sorry, the a 2, 5, 1, 3, et cetera. Okay, so this, this will list 
all the different coordinate pairs. Boom, 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 boom. There you go. Now, what happens if we wanted to list everything, like the coordinate 2, then list 5, then list 1, then list 3, then list 7, then list 4? Inside this loop, this may seem a little tricky, we don't want to print just one thing, we're going to print two things, but let's make this a little bit more um, pythonic. So we're going to print two different things in here. So instead of just saying print coordinate pair print bracket 0, coordinate pair bracket 1, let's make it flexible. So now, in case we want to have three-dimensional or four-dimensional um, things, so now we're going to do four, um, let's say, let's call it value So what's going to happen now is this first loop will pull out, pull out a coordinate pair. So like the first time around, it'll pull out 2, 5. And now we have the, the word, the variable coordinate pair having a list which has 2, 5. What this is going to do is it's going to go through that list, 2, 5, and one at a time it'll pull out the value. So the first time around the list, it'll print 2, which is the first part of 2, 5. Second time around the list, it'll print 5. So this is a bit tricky, but um, you'll, once you get used to it, it's pretty powerful. So there we go. It, this was left over from the, the printing the 4, um, this one right here. So after that, after this 4 is done, here it is, the 2, the 5, the 1, the 3. So now it's printing everything, 2, 5, 1, 3 and so forth. Maybe to make this clear, I could um, actually just, at this point right here, print out the coordinate pair to, to, so you can see that here, yeah, the coordinate pair, and then it'll go deeper in, and tell me what the values inside the coordinate pair are. Yeah, so now it prints out the coordinate pair. Oops, here is the one prints out the coordinate pair, and then it goes into this loop and prints out each of the values inside there, the x and the y values. Okay, one last thing. Let's just, um, just practice one more time building up a list. Let's make this the graph of um, a parabola. And well, let's, let's make this a little more descriptive. Let's call it x because this is going to be x coordinate. And let's just make it go from negative one. Uh, well, let's make it make it a little more interesting. Okay. Oops, that should be comma. Okay, so we're going to start by building up a a graph, which is going to be in a list. So I'll make that empty. Then we'll go into append. And we're going to append the xy coordinate. Now for a parabola, let's just make a, a simple parabola, which is, let's say, well, let's make a, we don't have to make it simple. Let's make it a little, little bit more interesting. So we're going to append, we're going to append now a list. So I'm going to start a list here. We're going to append the x value, which is just x, and the y value, which would be x squared. But let me just make it a little more interesting. Let's say x squared plus 3. That's not very interesting, but there we go. And it'll go through this list, and it, now we can print graph. And we'll see what, that, what it came up with. OK. Okay, so here's the first coordinate. Oh, do you see the mistake I made? Okay, tell me, tell me what, you, you, you should yell at me right now. Um, that can't be right. X squared plus 3 is not negative 8. This is not the squared um, operator, that is. Uh, 
There we go. So that is our graph. List of coordinates.